Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Coach Chad Onkstaborn, but built for theme park news, and welcome to a theme park predictions video. Now, they released the Flamingoland one yesterday, and today it's all about Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Now, big shout out goes to Matt Berwick and Jed123 for suggesting this video. Um, if you want a shout out or if you want a video suggestion with a shout out, then comment it down below. I'll take on board everything. Uh, someone suggests a Fantasy Island prediction video, so I've got that lined up in the pipe works for the near future as well. Uh, we've got plenty of videos set to come. Uh, but if you've got any ideas, then put them down below. I'm not struggling for ideas. I just want you guys' input. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, big shout goes to Matt Berwick and Jed123 for suggesting this prediction video on Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Now, as usual with these prediction videos, like the Flamingoland one yesterday, the predictions in here are going to be uh, my own personal opinion and what I think could realistically happen. Uh, so if you did like this video, please give it a like. Please comment down below your thoughts and opinions. Please subscribe to the channel. Click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Please share with your friends, your family, and on social media. And make sure you use that hashtag question before or after your question in the comments down below. If you want to submit a question for our next Q&A subscriber milestone session when we celebrate 2,000 subscribers. So put your questions in, do all the rest, and let's get into this video. So of course, like the Flamingoland video and these prediction videos, instead of looking back over the last five years, since it's gonna be a five year video, we have to look back at the last decade because I think now's the perfect time to look back at that decade. So let's have a look then at what went down at Blackpool Pleasure Beach between 2010 and 2020. So, starting off then in 2010 when the Dodgems opened at the park and Beaver Creek would close, ready for a 2011 development. Now involved in that was the demolishment of the Magic Mountain Dart Ride that's been open uh, for a good long time now, since the 80s I believe, the early 80s. Uh, now Magic Mountain, I, was, I didn't get the chance to ride Magic Mountain but I did see old footage of the Dart Ride and it is a it looked a very it looked like a very cute looking dart ride but i think from some of the the paint jobs and the anime animatronic or could have been animatronics um i think it did look like you know its time was up and it's past its peak time should we say it's prime it's past its prime uh so you know it was the right time for me and to be fair looking at beaver creek in that 2010 era it did look like the area that needed the most amount of work to it so beaver creek closed in 2010 most of the rides apart from magic mountain of course were staying magic mountain was demolished uh, the space invader 2 ride system was taken out uh, the space invader logo was taken off that was transformed into like the big pizza kitchen the main restaurant in the area and of course in 2011 we got Nickelodeon Land. Now it wasn't just Nickelodeon Land that opened in 2011. We got the renaming of the Pepsi Max Big One to the Big One when the Pepsi sponsorship was removed. And we also got the closure of Bling Swamp Buggies uh, underneath the Tom Sawyer Bridge and the Gold Mine which was the Dart Ride. Now the Bling was a Sierra Star shaped ride. The Swamp Buggies were like some bumper boats on the old lake beneath the Tom Sawyer Bridge, the old Tom Sawyer Bridge, and I'll get onto that in a little bit. And of course, you know, diehard fans of the Pleasure Beach will remember the gold mine. It was a classic dark ride. I never got the chance to do it as the gold mine, but I have done it as its successor. I'm not going to say what it is yet, but we're coming up to it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the gold mine was removed. It was having some on and off opening closing problems. Um, and it rarely operated in 2010 from what I heard so, or in the like, last couple of years before it closed so Goldmine was kind of like SBNO most of the time uh, from that period onwards so you know it was kind of like the right time to close it Bling of course was moved of course that is set to be coming back to the UK uh, as Turbulence at Fantasy Island and of course the Swamp Buggies were removed as well so in 2012, we had two massive refurbishments. Now, we did have the closure of the Pleasure Beach monorail. Again, it's an attraction that I never got the chance to do because I really wanted to experience it. I really wanted to do that attraction. Uh, now, I believe Holiday Rock FM was also removed from the park. Um, 
and they replaced it with like this new like new radio station kind of thing so uh, the old Holy Rock FM which I believe was the sponsor of the monorail if I'm not mistaken or, or one of the FM's was the sponsor of the monorail uh, that was removed along with it as well uh, but we had two massive refurbishments in that year the Urn Brew Revolution became just Revolution again for the first time since the Urn Brew sponsorship came into the ride now of course the new Revolution had no sponsor and it was repainted from orange and blue to silver and grey and of course Valhalla had its complete facade uh, redesigned and refurbished with brand new rock facade new scenes and other changes including a brand new exit bridge and the two human drives and on-ride photo booth uh, reinstalled just to improve the on and off-ride experience so the revolution in Valhalla were the main changes and of course construction for the 2013 dart ride replacing the gold mine and that was Wallace and Gromit Thrill-O-Matic a journey with the Wallace and Gromit characters through all of the films and it had that massive jump scare ending I won't spoil it uh, but those of us in the enthusiast community we know what we call it it's called blur <laughs> um, but for those of you who want to experience the ride I'm not going to say what happens in it but yeah yeah go to Pleasure Beach when it reopens and experience it you'll know what I mean um, so yeah, Wallace and Gromit replaced the gold mine. Wallace and Gromit Thrillomatic, by its full name, uh, opened in 2013. Now there were no new rides in 2014. However, in 2015 we had the opening on the former Bling site of a Gerslar Skyfly flat ride called Red Arrow Sky Force. Now Sky Force was sponsored, of course, by the Red Arrows, and we had this full opening ceremony. It was quite a nice ceremony, to be fair. Um, now. I didn't actually get to experience this on the opening day. I have experienced the ride now. It is all right. Uh, but I did get to experience it in the opening day, which is a shame. Uh, but yeah, that was the brand new attraction for 2015. Moving into 2016, we had the 120th anniversary. So we have fireworks, light openings, the 80th anniversary of the ice show that was celebrating 80 years of operation in the ice show. It was really good. Uh, but something else happened in 2016. In fact, it was the winter season 2015-2016. And that was the demolishment of the Tom Sawyer Bridge. Now, this was sparking major, major rumours of a brand new roller coaster to open. And of course, they then confirmed construction 2018. I'll get on to that in a little bit. 2017, the only thing that happened really was construction on 2018's project. But of course, towards the end of the season, or in fact in the winter season, going into 2018 was the removal and demolishment of the Wild Mouse roller coaster. Now I was really lucky to experience it the year before it was, you know, removed at the end of that season. Uh, and it's a credit that I'll take with me until my final breath. You know, it's a it's a classic coaster. Uh, and I really, really lucky to get the chance to do it before it closed and got demolished and all that stuff. Now, you know, there's many reasons why it closed. You know, they were trying to make modifications to the ride, even though it was a listed ride. You know, they were making modifications to it to make it safer. Uh, but unfortunately, it, it looks like it didn't pass standards. So, unfortunately, it had to be demolished. Uh, and then, of course, 2018 was the year, their largest investment of the decade and their largest investment probably since their last major roller coaster and that was of course the brand new Mac multi-launch coaster on the side of the Tom Sawyer Bridge uh, the go-karts uh, around there was removed at the end of 2017 as well and it was sort of incorporated uh, into the site and it was of course Icon uh, now of course um, the Tetley's teacup ride was also removed at the end of 2017 but that had no effect on Icon it was just the go-karts uh, and of course the go-karts removed uh, ready for Icon, this Mac multi-launch coaster. Now, Icon, I haven't got the chance to experience yet, so I can't wait to get down there in the near future. I am aiming, fingers crossed, hopefully to try and get down there for 2021 uh, for a certain certain project that's going down there, uh, hopefully, for 2021 still. And, yeah, that's what that's what my aim is for Blackpool Pleasure Beach 2021, to experience Icon and their next new project. Now, in 2019, the year after Icon, they opened on the former site of the Star Pub, the Boulevard Hotel. It was their second hotel after the Big Blue Hotel, which opened in the previous decade. Uh, so, you know, that might be some signs as to what could come in this prediction. It may come, it may not come, who knows. Uh, but, yes, their second accommodation opened, the Boulevard Hotel. Uh, in 2019 and of course in 2020 no new attractions in 2020 either 
but there was a certain closure uh, that went down in 2020, and that was the closure of Valhalla, which was their big dark ride, had its refurbishment in 2012, it was on and off the last couple of years, and it was finally closed in 2020, ready for 2021. Now, I'm not going to speak about 2021 now, because that's going to come in my predictions. That one's pretty much confirmed, that's confirmed anyway, but you know what I mean. Uh, so there we go, so that's looking at the past decade at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I'm not going to lie, overall, looking back on it, it was a decent decade. Now, the decade before, or going into this, you know, last decade, um, Blackpool Pleasure Beach was considered the fallen giant after the unfortunate passing of Jeffrey Thompson uh, in 2004. Um, you know, he was a giant. He was an absolute giant of the industry. I never got the chance to meet him, but... Um, you know, from the documentary from 1997-1998 and from, you know, other people's experiences, he was a nice guy. Um, and, you know, he, he, he built this empire. He built the Blackpool Pleasure Beach Empire. And it was up to Amanda and Nick to take it over uh, and really, you know, bring this Blackpool Pleasure Beach into the new age. And I think this decade was kind of a, a new era for Blackpool Pleasure Beach. I look back on this last decade as a brand new era uh, because... You know, they were considered the fallen giant towards the end of the previous decade before that. So, from 2010 onwards, yes, they had the Dodgems to start it off and things like that. But from when Beaver Creek closed for Nickelodeon Land and other developments such as the Sky Force, Wallace and Gromit, the refurbishments of Revolution, Valhalla, Icon, you know, and Valhalla closing again, ready for a massive development coming next year. You know, it's been a it's been a revolutionary decade. And it's been a brand new era for Blackpool Pleasure Beach because they're entering the you know they're competing again. They're competing with the modern market again. So I do feel like Blackpool Pleasure Beach went through a bit of a revolution. <laughs> Bad pun, I know. Uh, um, but I feel like Blackpool Pleasure Beach went through a revolution, literally a revolution in the last decade. So I think this next decade is keeping that new era and keeping that revolution up to standard so this leads me into my next five years predictions at Blackpool Pleasure Beach so let's start off with a very easy one 2021 we know what's going down it is the refurbishment and reimagining of Valhalla now Valhalla of course first opened in the year 2000 on the former site of the Funhouse attraction which burnt down a few years before uh, and the site was transformed in 1999 ready for construction 2000 to begin uh, Project 2000 it was known then and of course the catchphrase ride the adventure Valhalla Valhalla and I was actually very proud to have actually done the ride before it was closed this year ready for its refurbishment for next year um, And I, I'm glad I got to do it when it was an absolute soaker when the boat started to fill up and you know It was such a it was such a demonizing ride. It was such a demon. It was such a it was, it was like Hell's Playground come to life. It had fire, it had ice, it had temperature control, it had water, it had animatronics, it had brilliant, brilliant scenes. And I really hope uh, that they don't, you know, change most of that. I think they're just going to reimagine it, reimagine the technology, bring it back into the new generation, and bring it to a new generation of fans for Valhalla. So I think there won't be uh, much change. Uh, I, it looks like there's going to be a brand new soundtrack. Um, which I'm sure is going to be absolutely fantastic. Uh, but I think that Valhalla's refurbishment will be a good thing in the long term. Because they're going to make it less soaky. So it's going to be cheaper to maintain, I guess. Uh, because that's one, that's one of the big things with Valhalla. It's very costly to maintain. So I think they're on about you know making it less costly. And you know making it more affordable and things like that. So I think that's a good move for them. To make it less soaky and make it more affordable to maintain. Because it should be a ride that should be kept at the Pleasure Beach for a long, long time. And I think this refurbishment, if it all works to perfection each and every time, I think will be here for the next 15, 20 years at least. Um, so moving in then to 2022. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Red Arrow sponsorship with the Sky Force runs out at the end of next season. Unless they've extended it like they did with the... I know the Nickelodeon land was a 10-year contract. And I believe the extended the licensing for that now as well so for 2022 if i if i didn't know that it wouldn't have been it would be nickelodeon land getting extended its licensing or being removed 
Uh, but I believe personally that Skyforce will be on its way out at the end of 2021, and I think we're going to see a brand new flat ride in 2022. Now, don't get me wrong, Skyforce is a decent attraction, but I think it was less of a success the part th thought it was going to be. It's still a good ride, don't get me wrong, we'll still remember it that we did the bling. But I do believe that they can do better than Skyforce, um, personally. Especially with the other competition in the UK, like Air Race at Drayton Manor, and the Air Races going about, um, you know, around the, the fairs and the temporary, temporary parks and the piers. Uh, I do believe they can do better than Skyforce. So, in terms of a brand new ride, I would like to see a Zampelta Endeavour. I think that would be a pretty cool ride, a next generation Enterprise at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And I think they've been going down well in the States at the Six Flags Park. So I think that a good next generation Enterprise, uh, Zampella Endeavour, or maybe they could go along the Zampella Hawk, or maybe they could do a Zampella Top Spin, uh, the slanted one, or maybe they could go along with the Hus Top Spin and bring them back into the market. I know that LaRonde a few years ago introduced Demon, which is their Hus Top Spin. So, it isn't a crime to in reintroduce a classic ride in the new generation. So, I think maybe work with Huss on a brand new m model of the Top Spin. Maybe like a new version of the Top Spin. Uh, and invent that. Or, they could go along the uh, route of the Zampilla Endeavour. And I think that would be a good replacement. A good permanent replacement for Skyforce. When, if and when the licensing goes. If it's going at the end of next season. Uh, so moving in then to 2023 and I think 2023 and 2024 are very very similar I think it will be park improvements year however however I think we're going to see a site clearing in 2023 going into 2024 for their 2025 next major project now I'm going to talk about 2025 in a little bit and that's going to be like the bulk of this video should we say but I think 2023 and 2024 will be you know park improvement years spicing up things here and there paint ops tlc work uh maybe remove a little couple of little attractions that aren't maybe doing so well uh the eddie stobart trucks convoy ride i you know that i think that's still there i don't think he's got a place at the park anymore i think it's very very temporary so i think remove that um Maybe a couple of other little children's rides. Maybe spruce up the Dodgems. Give it a new name. Give it a brand new theme. Uh, make it look like a themed Dodgems attraction. Look at what Thought Park did with the Angry Birds Dodgems. The King Pigs World Hog Dodgems. It's a classic attraction. You never thought Thought Park would add it in 2014. With the Angry Birds Land. But, you know, they did a good job with it. You know, they did a good job with theming it. And make it look like a permanent attraction. So I do believe that they could theme up the Dodgems nice and well, rename it, give it a new lease of life. Apart from that, maybe, like I said, remove a little couple of little children's rides that don't have any, you know, importance to the park's history. And just little spruce ups around the park here and there, paint tops, TLC work, that kind of thing. But, as we move swiftly into 2025, now this will be the next major roller coaster year. Now I said that work would take place in 2023. Uh, going into 2024, ready for coaster work to begin for 2025. For a summer, a spring to summer 2025 opening, in my opinion. Now, I have two sites on your screen. I have the site of Infusion, which is their Vacoma SLC, uh, relocated from their former property, Southport Pledgeland, now owned by someone else. Uh, of course, used to be known as the Traumatizer. And of course, the other site is the Steeplechase. Now, you can see one type of coaster for both sites, and then there's another type of coaster for each individual site. So, either site, I think, could possibly get a Mac Big Dipper. Now, this has been talked about in the Enthusiast community for a number of years, a couple of years now, uh, as a rumour. And I'd like to see a Mac Big Dipper, not going to lie. Um... I personally believe that a map Big Dipper would be a great fit for the park. It's got sharp turns, it's got a couple of inversions. I think on Infusion site it would work really well with the lake. Uh, and I do believe that it would be a great, you know, asset to the park's lineup. I think it would be quite a different style seating arrangement. Yes, the park would lose a suspended slash inverted coaster. But I think they can, you know, repay that on a different site. Maybe bring in an invert coaster of some kind. Uh, with the steeplechase site, again with the Map Big Dipper, it could work really, really well. I think it could really integrate with the rest of the ride, maybe come really, really close to Icon. Uh, and I do believe that a Map Big Dipper could be very, very likely, as it could be like a two for one Mac rides deal. Uh, so they've got Icon and they get a second coaster from Mac. I think it could be a two for one deal. 
If it's not a Matt Big Dipper and it's not a two for one deal by Matt Ride, I've come up with another prediction for each individual site. Now, starting off with Infusion. I think if it's not a map Big Dipper, I think one thing that would really work well, it may be smaller than the Six Flags models and Cedar Fair models, but I do believe it could work across the lake, and that is an RMC single rail Raptor coaster. It may not be the exact prototype of Railblazer at California's Great America, or Wonder Woman Golden Lasso coaster at Six Flags Fiesta Texas, however, I think that an RMC Raptor coaster, the first RMC in the UK, would be a good fit now like i said it would be smaller it could be smaller than the other models uh, but you'll also see that i extended the site of infusion uh, past that into the empty space where of course if you didn't know your history on blackpool pleasure beach before infusion came into this site we had a log flume here called drench falls uh, log flume and the empty space behind infusion is a piece of where you know drench falls would have been but it's now empty space I think they could integrate the rides, either an RMC or a Map Big Dipper, into that particular site. And I do believe that maybe like an inversion or a helix or something on that site would work really, really well. Uh, and it'd be a great, you know, if you're walking under it, maybe it's like a, maybe have like a second entrance underneath Big One and this new coaster. I think it could work really, really well. Now, moving across to the steeple chase, my other prediction apart from a Map Big Dipper for that site is a new modern steeplechase by SNS. Now, SNS released this steeplechase concept, um, you know, in you know in the past year or so, and I always thought like it could work at a part like Blackpool Pleasure Beach that loves its historic rides. Now, you got to remember this like a Mobius Jewel um, kind of coaster, like Twister Colossus at Six Five Magic Mountain, which is an RMC. That's a Mobius loop where it's dual track, but it's not actually, you know, two coasters. It's sort of, it does one half and then it joins on with the second half as another train goes up the first half. So it's very, very confusing. But I think that a Mobius loop steeplechase would work on the site of the former steeplechase. Keep the history alive. I know, you know, people may want the steeplechase gone. It might be considered one of the weaker coasters at Blackpool Pleasure Beach now. But I think that a modernized version of the steeplechase to keep the heritage alive would be a perfect fit for that site so there we go so that my friends is the next five years my next five year predictions for blackpool pleasure beach now as you'll have noticed in these next five years it's mainly preparation for 2025 now i did mention the valhalla refurbishment i mentioned a brand new flight ride for 2022 but after that, it's just preparation work for 2025, which I think will be the year of their next major roller coaster. It could be sooner, it could be later. Now, I put in a little hint when I was talking in the past about the Boulevard Hotel and the fact they've had a hotel, one hotel every decade. I think they could get a brand new accommodation, but I think that will be past 2025. I think that could be between 2026 and 2029, maybe even 2030. You never, never know. Uh, but I think they could get their next accommodation at the end of every decade or as many accommodations as the park would allow the, as the park site would allow you know at the end of every decade just as far as they can but I think we could see a brand new accommodation in this decade but I think it would be at the very end of the decade like with the Boulevard Hotel uh, with the Big Blue Hotel the decade before that uh, so these next five years is Valhalla refurbishment, new flat ride, and then just preparation for 2025 for their next major roller coaster. Because I think the Pleasure Beach are really going to start adding more attractions now. And I think that they are going to uh, get a sense of adding brand new rides and attractions and adding more new rides and attractions ready for future years. And I think they are going to really revolutionise the park again in this decade. They've already revolutionised it in the last decade, in the last 10 years. And I think they're going to revolutionise the park again in this next 10 years. But for these first next 5 years, I think it's going to be preparation for a mid-decade coaster in 2025, in my opinion. Uh, but of course, plans can change, predictions can change. But that's just my first overall prediction, shall we say. Um, so of course, predictions can change, ready for... Uh, future years as well. Uh, I'm sure other things could be announced in f in the next couple of years for future years as well. So uh, what I'd like to see from Blackpool Pleasure Beach is a multi-year development plan. You look at Alton Towers, you look at the plan they put in place years ago. Uh, this is before Smiler by the way. Uh, and you had the removal of Ripsaw, Blade, Flume, Spinball, you know, possibly two, well two, possibly three out of those four rides have now been removed. 
Spinball's still there. Blade is SBN, no, that's why I'm saying two, maybe three out of those four. Um, SW7, another major coaster. Yes, the site may have changed from that other major coaster site, but, you know, it's still a major coaster. So, you know, we've got we've got most of that long-term development plan up to scratch. So, I think that a long-term development plan for Blackpool Pleasure Beast, one they can stick to, would give us a clear idea then of what we're expecting in future years. Obviously, they don't want to spoil it, but... Maybe just like a general outline of what they want to do with the park in the next 10-15 years. So, it'd be really nice to see that come about. We don't know when, we don't know if they are going to do that. Uh, but it's still fun to predict. So, very much, thank you very much guys for watching this theme park predictions video on the next 5 years of Blackpool Pleasure Beach. Uh, I'll be back with more videos over the next few weeks, so stay tuned for more content. Uh, we've got loads of content, we're pushing out more videos. Uh, and of course, more videos means you guys can subscribe. And the more subscribers we get, the more known we get. So, I want to get this channel out there, out into the world, and let's get these people in. Let's get the people in, guys. Come on, bring them in. You know, closing down sale, everything must go. And I'll, you know, give this to you guys. <laughs> um... But thank you very much, guys, for watching this YouTube video. Please like, comment, subscribe. And for now, guys, my name is Coach Chell. Keep on the Coast Life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have a nice day.